So welcome to OWF Web TV 2012. We're here with uh, Dave Neary, member of the Open Source uh, and Standards team at Red Hat, Simon Phipps, the president of Open Source Initiative, and uh, Cédric Thomas, the president of OW2. Welcome to all three of you. We're happy to have you here. Uh, so uh, this today you ran a community summit, a very successful community summit, might I say, on, uh, that touched on the cloud and open source and the relation between the two. So, uh, Cédric, maybe you could give us a rundown on what, what this uh, community summit was actually real about. Yeah, this was the fifth uh, community summit we're running at OWF. Each year we run one community summit with where we invite all the uh, leaders and practitioners of communities in the open source world. And uh, this year we decided to uh, handle the, uh, tackle the topic of cloud computing. Uh, we understand that cloud computing uh, changes the situation of software. Open source is defined by access to software, by the right for uh, users to read the software, to use it for any usage, to change it, to redistribute it. With cloud computing, what the users get is not the software, it's the service. So where is the software? If the software disappears, if the, soft if the software does not circulate, um, where is, is there any room for open source? Where uh, do our communities uh, uh, do? Uh, how, what kind of control can we uh, exert on, on software or on service? So the, the cloud computing raises a whole uh, set of a lot of questions for us, and uh, it was very, very interesting uh, session this afternoon indeed. So what were the main arguments actually? Well, some of the arguments is that software uh, in cloud computing, oh well, cloud computing really is not run like uh, what we call a bazaar. Bazaar is the image for um, developing software in the open source world. And uh, we could contend that uh, cloud computing is much more industrial, much more, uh, the investments are such that it's more run like a cathedral. And uh, the, those that run cathedrals are not likely to share to the same extent that those that run the bazaar. It's, it's not as open as uh, traditional computing. So there is like uh, this trend towards uh, uh, a closure uh, of software, and uh, this is something we were discussing this afternoon. And uh, Dave, you discussed uh, about community. So what, what do you think is the nature of, uh, c of open source communities in the cloud? So one of the... One of the things that we noticed is that uh, in cloud software, things like OpenStack or Overt, uh, things that you would use to manage virtualized networks, you need typically a lot of hardware to be able to run them. So the bar to using the software is higher, and therefore the bar to contributing the software is typically set at a level where you need to either have an organi organization like a university behind you, or you need to be a company. Uh, and that changes, in some sense, the nature of the dynamics of a community. Of, of a community. We're seeing communities of companies like the OpenStack Foundation rather than communities of individuals as may have been more traditional open source. And yet, one of the things that we've noticed is that these, are, these stacks of software that are being used in the cloud are essentially built on individual components that individually are not monetizable. And yet, those individual components have to be maintained and the, we need to keep the lights on in terms of the operating system and the lower level libraries. And that's where we're seeing in individual contributions are still valuable. Okay, and uh, I mean, the, the basic idea behind this community summit was actually to see what, what is open source uh, or what is the cloud, to put it better, doing to open source. So, so Simon, what, what, what do you think? Does really uh, cloud make open source irrelevant? Well, obviously not. Uh, the biggest driving force in open source at the moment is cloud computing. Uh, the very reason for that is because cloud computing is about uh, scaling solutions globally. Uh, and to do that, if every time you go to scale, you have to ask permission from someone to spin up 100 copies of a piece of software or to modify the software to fit your computing environment, uh, think that will never fly. So cloud computing environments universally use open source software. I think the question about whether open source software is made irrelevant in a world of cloud arises from using the wrong frame of reference to think about open source software. Uh, the English speaking world uses the word free primarily to mean not having to pay. And that word has led us into thinking about open source with a price frame. And consequently, when you hear open source spoken about, people talk about total cost of ownership, monetization, business model, uh, words that are to do with that price frame. 
think what cloud computing does for us is create a world where the flexibility frame is more important, where the ability to participate in a community, where the ability to use the software without asking for permission, where the ability to customize the software so it works in your world, those are shown to be the most important attributes. And actually, cloud computing liberates us from being stuck in the price frame and opens up a whole new flexibility frame with which we can understand open source. So not only is it completely ridiculous to say that cloud computing makes open source irrelevant, given cloud computing is the primary driver of open source adoption today, but more than that, cloud computing liberates us from being stuck in that world of always asking about the price and helps us to understand that we need to look at the flexibility and the freedom instead. So since all of you attended and, and, uh, and were debating about this thing, do you, do you all share this, the, the sentiment of uh, Simon about, about uh, cloud computing in the open source? I'm not as optimistic as Simon, I'm sorry to say so. Um, no, I think we should look at the evolution. Um, it's true that if you look at the way that is static, you can see that, of course, um, open source runs on cloud computing and cloud computing runs on open source software, so there is a strong correlation between both. However, what we see is that the leaders of the cloud computing world are more uh, very traditional companies, and the incentive for these traditional companies to share the software is not the same as it was in the traditional um, IT or enterprise computing. So you have to look at the evolution. Um, uh, I do not doubt that in the long term, uh, we open source will, in, 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 in any case, um, get through these difficulties, but right now I think the, the way is getting a little bit narrow. We're going through some, some straits there, and we have to be, um, it's a question of awareness. We have to be careful and see where the difficulties might lie because we, we sh must not overlook some of these difficulties. If I can add a note. Oh. Yes. Sure. Um, I, would, I would say that open source and free software has been for the computing industry uh, a commoditization play. It's let's commoditize the operating system so that uh, the, the hardware is where the value is again. So that's why we've seen a lot of hardware companies investing in the Linux kernel and, and the open source operating system. Um, now the question arises, who benefits from the commoditization of the platform for the cloud? Uh, and those, those companies and those individuals, the people who have a, a benefit to gain from commoditizing the platform stack, something like the OpenStack participants, uh, who are trying to commoditize uh, the stack platform t to take power away from Amazon, um, they will realize a value in, in working with open source software. So I, I, contrary to Cedric, I'm actually quite optimistic because there, are, there will always be value in commoditization of technology. And okay, so the technology has changed a little bit in the move to the cloud, but there will always be value for somebody in trying to commoditize the, the base software base on which we build. Simon, did you have a final word or? Well, so the interesting thing about what Dave is saying there is that uh, a group of people who traditionally have not been core contributors to open source projects, that's to say companies running data centers, uh, are now incented to participate in communities in a way they never were before by the desire to be involved in the destiny of the cloud computing software that they work with. So once again, I, I believe that although superficially cloud computing seems to distance us from the source, because we are used to thinking of open source software like LibreOffice that we actually use personally, uh, nonetheless, I think cloud computing is going to drive more businesses to invest more money, more innovation, and more skill in free software and in open source software and that benefits all of us by opening up new opportunities that we have never previously considered, by removing the permission culture and letting us do things because they're good rather than because we're allowed to. And uh, overall, I'm very positive about cloud computing as a force for good. We do have a little bit of the future to just get over where there is the attempt to control it by uh, dinosaur companies breathing their last breaths. But I'm very optimistic about open source in the era of cloud computing. Well, thank you very much for this discussion. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.